Phoenix Insight has a precise astrometric solution calculation tool. In this video, we're going to work with this image of NGC281. Before we start, we need to download the catalogs. To do this, we log into the PixInsight software distribution system with our username and password. The star catalogs are in the XPSD database files section. For astrometry tasks, we use the Gaia DR3 catalog, which is currently the most precise in terms of both the number of stars and their positions. For photometric tasks, we use the Gaia DR3 SP spectrophotometric catalog. We can use this catalog to do calculations that require star brightness measurements, like color calibration and gradient correction. It's a very large catalog, so we can download a small version with 34 million stars or a large version with 219 million stars. The small set works for small telescopes with a large field, but if you're using a telescope with a long focal distance, it is better to download the complete set. For the purpose of this video, we're also going to download the asteroid XF files, which we can use to label the asteroids in our images. We'll look at this in more detail in the second part of this video tutorial. Once we've downloaded the files to our computer, we need to configure them in the Gaia tool, which is in the Astrometry section. Here, we click on the Preferences button, select Gaia DR3, and select the files. Now that we have this catalog, we can calculate the astrometric solutions. Now we need to configure the Gaia DR3 SP catalog and select the files again. We'll configure the Asteroid XF files in the next video because they can be selected directly via Annotate Image. The astrometric solution is calculated automatically by the WBPP script if we enable the astrometric solution option in the Lights tab. But in this video, we're going to do it manually using an image that doesn't have a solution. To do this, we go to Scripts, Image Analysis, and select Image Solver. If the image has metadata with the approximate coordinates of the center, the focal distance, pixel size, and date, all of these parameters will be configured automatically. However, this image is a JPEG file that has already been processed and doesn't have any of those metadata. We therefore need to input the data manually. The object in the center is the NGC281 nebula. We can look online to find its approximate coordinates. To do this, we click on the Search button and type in the object name. The Internet server returns the object's coordinates. We click OK, and now we have to enter the telescope's focal distance and the pixel size. These data are important, and they should be as close as possible to the correct ones. If they're not, Image Solver won't work because it won't be able to match the stars in the image to the ones in the catalog. Image Solver is a high precision tool because, as well as finding the center coordinates and angle of rotation, it can also calculate the geometric distortions in the focal plane. To see how this affects the image, we're going to disable this option for now. This means that Image Solver will only find the basic astrometric solution data. Here we have the center coordinates, the field of view, the actual focal distance, which is 393 millimeters, and the angle of rotation. Now we can see if the image has geometric distortions using the annotate image script, which is in the render section. To see the distortions, we're going to annotate the Gaia stars up to a magnitude of 13. 
We're not going to show the name labels, just the position markers. While the stars in the center are more or less in the right places, toward the corners, the markers aren't quite over the stars. In other words, the image has some quite significant geometric distortions. A traditional astrometric solution isn't able to transform pixel coordinates to equatorial coordinates across the whole image. But PixInsight can calculate these distortions and its EXIF image format can save all of these complex metadata. Now we're going to calculate the astrometric solution with distortion correction enabled. The image now has some basic metadata because we've executed Image Solver already, so these parameters have been configured for us. Now we need to enable distortion correction. We're going to use a spline order of 4, which will work better for the distortions in the corners. When we enable distortion correction, the process takes a little longer because it's iterative and the error gradually decreases. If we annotate the image again and look at the corners, we can see that even in the corners the markers are exactly on the centers of the stars. The positioning of the stars is also perfect in the center. This time, the pixel coordinates have been transformed to equatorial coordinates accurately across the whole image. If we click on the image, the readout preview window shows the equatorial coordinates of each pixel, and this is true not only for the annotated image, but also the original one, which now has a correct astrometric solution. With the Annotate Image script, we can display the coordinate grid and label the NGC objects, but there are some other interesting options too. For example, we can annotate the brightest stars or annotate the galaxies and planetary nebulas. Let's remove the Gaia stars from the list and annotate all of these objects. And now we discover that the image is full of small galaxies, like this one here, or this one here. These aren't actually stars, they are galaxies, and we can see them now because we've annotated them. Here, for example, we have a small planetary nebula. And this bright star here is Alpha Cassiopeia. PixInsight has another interesting tool called Finding Chart, which generates a chart we can use to locate the area in our image on a map of the sky. We can use this once we have the astrometric solution for the image. It shows us the area that our image occupies in relation to the constellations. As we saw earlier, this star on the right is Alpha Cassiopeia, one of the five stars in the asterism that forms the constellation's distinctive W shape. This chart probably looks familiar. If we go to Astrobin and search for the image, we will find it, with the objects annotated thanks to the astrometric solution and with the same chart. This is because Astrobin automatically calculates astrometric solutions using PixInsight. The images we upload to Astrobin are automatically solved and annotated, and these charts generated, so that all users can take advantage of this feature. In the next video, we'll look at how to solve images with very large fields and annotate the asteroids.